two, one, we're live. Oh, wait, 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 wait. All right. Open up your sparkling. Thank you Cheers. for the sparkling water, my friend. Absolutely. How goes it, man? Mark Frommeyer, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, Mark Frommeyer. Um, yeah, that's what they... That's it. You're, uh, you, you're, you're starting a petition where people can gather together and vote to rename stars or something like that. Something like that. And then you're making something toy like cars that. as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a car. That's my understanding. It's not a car. No? What? No. It's a three-wheeler. Three-wheeler. Yeah. Closer to a motorcycle? It's, uh, it kind of splits the lanes when you think about it. Yeah. The way people normally think about motorcycles is two-wheelers. Uh, the way people normally think about cars is four. But by code, we are a motorcycle cool. manufacturer and because three-wheel vehicles are technically motorcycles. Yeah. Uh, Maybe it's not everyone's question, but my first question when I saw it was how hard is it to tip it? And, like, have you, have you done road tests that you can, like, share with people in terms of how fast and how sharp of a turn you can make? Uh, we've done we, – there have certainly been on-road tests and that – I'll have you pull it up kind of about within a fist from your mouth. Gold. There, there, there are definitely tests that folks have run at the company in terms of really trying to push it to the limit. Mm -hmm. um, I have myself not really tried yeah. to to uh, tip it over, but it's got a remarkably low center of gravity, yeah. low and forward CG. We, it, it, I think, the real benefit of the Archimodal platform is that it's it is. The, the mass is well placed. Yeah, because you got to understand when most people think of three wheelers, they always hear one in the back, two in the or one in the front, two in the back, and it tips really easy. Th there are there are a lot. What I found is that there are a lot of non-optimal ways to do three wheel vehicles. Yes, there are. Um, but there there are some really really nice uh, spots in that landscape that are real sweet spots. Nice. And I think we we found a few of them. Beautiful. Right from the start, I'm going to light up one of Metolius's can of gars. Oh, Normally boy. on the show, All we right. light up... Um, uh, I, I, I might join you in that nice. later on. Beautiful. Now, normally we light up the joints, but I'm going to go for the can of gars. You and know? Just so everyone knows, this is this might be the first show from the back from the break. Uh, most of them will be in a studio right across the uh, street, not even. Uh, right <laughs> next door. This is my neighbor. Over the fence. Other side Over of the, the fence. fence. It's been about a year since yep. I've been doing episodes. Uh, most will not be like this. Most will be three camera angles with Kenzie in the shot and she'll be switching between them live but this one because of covid you delta know, is coming out outside protocol outside protocol i respect it is it a big task to make decisions that affect 200 people's families and lives uh it's well so when is it a big task or does I it weigh I heavy think, on your I mean, conscience 200 people we we as humans all make ta make decisions all the time that affect lots of people's lives all around us Oh, I got John Fries. Uh, John Fries is calling in. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Fries. <laughs> Fries, he hey. Hey. Dude, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm on Tiger's first uh, podcast back from, uh, from, from his hiatus from the COVID break. <laughs> yeah, clearly not. But but he look at what he's what look at what he's got. Oh, he uh, he, he he's ducked. at a show. Like as you're as you're torching a canagar. You know what's the funniest thing ever? The man who invented this canagar. Wild. FaceTimes me Called in the middle in. of this recording. As Very soon as odd. he Very saw odd. the 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 room, he's like, "Can I commission you to make me one of those tables for Jericho?" I'm the sure. Jericho house. I'm sure. Immediately. Right. And I'm like, I was really thinking about it, like a deeper way of like. Cause I've never charged someone a commission for my work. So I'm like, what would I want to do that? I'm like, it's crazy sparkling water straight from the Alps. I know. I like it. It seems like a really carbon inefficient sparkling water. <laughs> I know to get it all the way yeah. over here, uh, but it, it, th their whole thing is they're fighting against plastic. Cause it's not actually recyclable. They says it's more carbon neutral to throw your, your plastic recyclables in the garbage than it is to recycle them. Yeah. But that's just cause we don't have the right, uh, <laughs> cost effective way. Uh, so fuel, just creation plant set up to turn plastic into fuel but to get back to it um what what do you think of this as a way of doing commissions purchase the cost of like like the, the resin and the the, also, it's the actual well, hold paint on. it's crazy the idea that you're you're gonna you're gonna boat these things over from switzerland and think that you're saving on oil sorry 
No. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. But it's a fun thing to offer guests uh, who want to feel I'm, like they're no, drinking I'm, I'm a switch, beer. I'm switching back to the... Uh, to the heart and science. To the heart and science. Kind of the... Boycotting. The essence of who you are as a person. Death. Wow. It's actually boycotting the death. Boycotting liquid death. <laughs> I mean, keep keep that water in, in the Alps. But anyways, okay, so, so hey, pay the exact price of how much it costs to buy the, the paint and the epoxy. And then besides that, don't pay me anything. One year later, however much joy it's brought you, put a dollar amount on that and pay the commission one year later. Because then it's more of like a truthful thing. It's like, oh, no, like, what, if you never use it, you don't have to pay anything in a year. Right. But if you end up really liking that, I think that's a fun way of doing commissions. Well, it's, we'll uh, see how it shows you, it. shows you uh, uh, believe in the quality of your work, its potential benefit, and the honesty of the buyer. It's the in, very first all, thing. All in one. Yeah. All in one. It's the first thing you said when you saw the table. You're like, has John, Fr- John Fries seen this? It's like, it's like a bowling ball. He is weirdly tuned into the universe. The second I light it up on the show, he calls. He FaceTimes in. It's, it's very odd. Well, so anyways. That's, that's Tiger Talks getting back in action. Yeah, truly. You never know. <laughs> so anyways, what's on, what's on Mark Fronmeyer's agenda besides for uh, uh, kickstarting? By the way. Fronmeyer. 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 Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, I thought I thought it was a spin-off of John Mayer. Big fan. No. <laughs> Frone Mayer. Frone Mayer. Frone Mayer. <laughs> Frone Mayer. Here we go. So what's, what's on your agenda aside from starting your folk career, though? It's kind of a transition to I mean, Uncle John. I, I'd the... say rock and roll, honestly. Is a rock and roll band. Now, the, the band name is intended to be Country Music Legend, but it's, you know, rockers and ballads. Yeah. It's funny. Kenzie and I should really get that name down if we're eventually going to have it as a last name. Well... You know, for people listening in right now, Kenzie and I are going to sweet talk that, <laughs> Mark maybe, Small. Yeah, this is a this is an interesting theory, uh, but yeah, it's a you know name. Hey, of course, you're free beings. I'm sure you can. Yeah, you can. Do I mean, legally, we do, can just do right? it. But, but there is some legality to, to to naming your child. Like you can't, or a lot of people say that the churches wouldn't allow us to name. Not the churches, but the the judge wouldn't allow us to name our kid God. People were like, "Oh, you get on these weird like infringements, or like like people wouldn't feel morally okay, like because a judge has to like okay a name of a child." Apparently, that's what we ran into. Because after convincing Kenzie, finally she got on board. She's like, "Okay, we can name our kid God." And then I'm like, "Okay, can we actually do it?" And people are like, "You're gonna run into some problems." Okay, which is very unfortunate. You gotta hate those roadblocks in life, you know. The most arbitrary things. We're like, I feel like. As a sovereign individual who's not like encroaching on anyone else's life, I should be able to yeah. do whatever. You seem like one who tests the boundaries of such things. As do I'll, you. I'll, you know, you know, I'll be curious to check in and see how your twenty years Godchild naming project is going on. Yeah, because I mean, imagine just being like God. You got to settle down in like a third grade <laughs> classroom, being that teacher. <laughs> wow, <laughs> you really thought this through. That's that's a that's a great gift you're bestowing on your child. Absolutely, their entire name. life, they're giving so many people the joy of they go home and they're like, guess what kid I have in my class? God, I have God in my class. Well, God's calling other kids names. Thoughtful. Yeah. So, anyways, I mean, this is this is a very uh, unusual show. How? I mean, you, you're someone who like multiple times in conversations, you kind of go to like like your phone, like you you can switch off very fast. You live. A life that like rock stars like many people don't get to live like a rock star gets to play in front of hundreds of thousands of people it's like wow that's a peak life experience not many people attain you also have one you could do almost anything at any given time and uh, you choose to remain in eugene oregon well i'm not sure that that first statement's accurate really but um in, in terms of just like being able to do anything at any given time you know it's uh uh always constraints yeah. Oh, for sure. But no, I, I it's I, I I grew up in Eugene. I like Eugene. It's a very livable place, lovely community. Yeah. Um and uh well, it's you know, a good place to 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 try new ideas. Yeah. No, I could I mean, so when you were my age, you were traveling the world cuz just for people, weren't you? I believe I heard you say that. Um uh, what what's what's your age? Again? I'm 24. 24. I just turned no, 24. No, I had not yet traveled. I travel? when, when did I go? You, you really I, didn't I, no, give I was, a background. No, I was like, I was like, uh, when did I go to, what, I, I, the, I went to Europe when I was probably like 27. Cool. So you 27, yeah. made the exit at what age from, from tri- you know, actually, Tribes yeah, and Brush Games? I, I, now I recall, I, I turned 27 uh, on the beach Nice. Uh, of a little island called Lopud off the coast of Croatia. Cool. 
I mean, I wasn't on the beach at midnight, but I was. I did go to the beach on my birthday. And so trying all these other places, what's the magnetism of Eugene that would have you say, you know where I want to go? That kind of rainy, cool place that's kind of, you know, it doesn't really, you know? Like, well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm from here. It's like, it's, it's home. You're from here. <laughs> yeah. You're Mark from here. Uh, <laughs> For people who don't know, I mean. Some may say. This is an arbitrary show. Mostly I'm speaking to people of one, never met before. Or okay. two people who I don't see daily. Like when I've, I've done one and show with Kenzie. Now you're my neighbor, and so it's like we're neighbors. neighbors. It's, it's very interesting speaking like on the record with someone who I see often. Doing one show with Kenzie, we had to try it like three times before we actually just recorded it, because it's like it's an interesting aspect being like, okay, we're gonna talk like we normally do, but now other people are gonna be listening. It's a weird thing to do. And I don't know why. I mean, when I said, hey, you'll be the first guest back from the break. And then you said, with COVID, I'll have to be outside. And I put my foot down. I'm like, well, it's only going to be in the studio. But this will be the first guest back from the break. It'll be episode 114. Yep. And I have it on a, a chalkboard up there, which I'll have to erase and change it for the next so wait, guest. wait, you put your foot down. Mm-hmm. I thought you said you were you were gonna you were gonna delay it a month and then after we get through the Delta wave. And I I'm guess like, I didn't put my foot down now. <laughs> you made a pretty convincing Delta argument. Delta I'm like, wave's looking real problematic. So I don't. Okay, here's a really big thing that like every time you bring this up, I'm like, it seems like a want a cake and eat it too situation. This whole year, you've been very afraid of like or like willing like uh, it makes a lot of sense, but like just cautious of the fires coming to Eugene. Um, I. I wouldn't say I've been afraid of them. I've just been o- aware of the fact that last year we had huge forest fires. Absolutely. And this is a drier summer yet. Yeah. And so probably continue on this trend. I, you know, to me, it, it it's looking out at what what you know could potentially happen in the relatively near, you know, like our lifetime, kids' lifetime, grandkids' lifetime time frame, and going, you know, should we be should we be prepared? Yeah. For those eventualities, I think it makes sense. I mean, unless it's, it, it's it's sort of like, what's the probability times what's the magnitude of impact if mm-hmm. it should come to pass? Yeah. And when that number starts to get high, yeah, right, then you go, okay, I'm going to dedicate resources to uh, uh, outcome avoidance. Yeah. So every decision you make is a math problem, in other words. Uh, it, I think we all do this kind of like it, just unconsciously all the time. It's like we, you know, you weigh what's what's the you know what's the risk. It's the you know, risk reward or risk oh, yeah. uh, you know outcome scenario, and it's 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 sort of it's like how neurons work. I agree. In, in, in a very you know. That tends to be why uh, I'm around a lot of places where everyone's drinking beer and the cost benefit uh, ratio is why I don't. Alcohol is one of those things that I get 20 minutes of like, I feel really light and exuberant. And then I'm like, whoa, I get about an hour of like, why did I do that to myself? Yeah, I still test it every month or two. You know, just got just to gotta see if the uh, the original assumption holds true. Yeah, but what I was trying to get you to is a really hard, and I don't necessarily mean to put you in an awkward place, but it's worth considering is the fact that it's like, well, the fires are coming because there's more people and stuff like COVID's almost a way that the earth has historically culled people and, and gotten it to a place where it's like, Oh, we don't have all this energy. It's, it seems like a situation cause you're a very large proponent of getting vaccinations, which I can absolutely respect. It's, it just seems like a no brainer at this point, but yeah. But to what extent is keeping everyone alive counterintuitive to stopping fires, the, the heating up of the planet, like having uh, everyone stay alive at all cost, which takes up I, more I, energy. I, I, look, you are know, you thinking there's a third route? People are going to make their own choices, but it, it's uh, there's a ripple effect through everybody. Yeah, and that whole, I, I, you know, the the idea that you know we need to depopulate humanity in Not order depopulate. to in order to save the planet is like that. That to me doesn't make any sense either. It's like we just need to right size the general human relationship with the planet. Mm-hmm. Right, we we are almost everybody you know way over consuming yes the the resources and not it's not it's like the resources get consumed and go away they get transformed into other things like you know garbage and carbon dioxide in the a- atmosphere that is cooking the forests yeah so uh, right sizing the relationship is more just like uh, I, I i think we were in in as, as we've grown up the idea of like acquiring more and more and more stuff at one point in time, 
that was like, well, that's how, you know, you demonstrate happiness and success and feel better and whatever. But now it, it's like a lot of times stuff is a huge burden. Oh, absolutely. I mean, right? that's the whole, the things you own, own you. And right. it comes back to people are starting to see minimalism as actually the next extravagant way of living because it means you don't have to be constrained by things, but you still have enough resources to to reach into the stream and pull out anything you need on any given day. Oh, uh, dog is, dog is making, sending signals. Dog's in the shot. She, she wants, uh, she wants maybe someone incoming. to throw the ball. Is that, what the, is that what you want? Okay, but you can't trip on the cables. Guest trip on the cables. Guest oh. appearance by Kira. This will be an endless. Well, that'll do it for about five seconds. Yeah. Okay. I got to ask, uh, a while ago you were like, you, you, you had interest. You're like, man, it'd be really fun to go on the Joe Rogan show. You said you'd give him 15 minutes of your time. Would you do a three hour show sitting oh, down for three hours? With Joe? Are you kidding? Yeah. Of course. Nice. I've just never seen, I, like, I haven't been in that many situations where you're like laser focused on a, a communication with someone for a long time. So I'm like, that like, th this will be a unique show just because I don't think I've sat down and talked to you without like a distraction for an hour since well, I've met you. Kira's Nobody doing does. Her best. Kira's doing her best. That's an even an okay sound. That yeah. barks though, you know? Okay, but I'll, all right, one more. Well, you know, you got to be decent multitaskers in this day and age. You really do. And, but anyways. Hey, hang on to the conversational thread. Where were we? That comes back to the whole thing of why I'm having it is the fact that people don't tend to do this anymore. Like no one just sits down without a phone near them or like, like that they're getting distracted by every five seconds or like, Hey, let's have a meal or hike. Like you're always doing something. People just don't really sit down and talk to each other anymore. I feel like there's a yeah, quite no, a large no, disconnect. You bring it here. You bring it here. So even the possibility of people. This show is now dog training with Mark. All right. Dog training cure with Mark. Five more seconds. <laughs> Freedom. Go. Yeah. Um, I have no questions whatsoever. No. I mean, what do you, in 10 years, you're going to have a foundation or are you still going to be a part of Arkimoto and star voting and marble it up? <laughs> the trifecta. Yeah. Um, it's almost, there should be a name for that or something. Uh, well, yeah, you know, you'll have to interview <laughs> we'll, someone else for that. We'll think that about it theory. sometime. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll workshop it. I'm sure their neighbor is who to pine. Might be. Um, but, uh, uh, well, uh, my my goal is actually to get the foundation up and rolling, you know, relatively as soon as possible. That's, you know, the the my intention for my equity in Arkimoto has been from the beginning that, you know, if it ever amounted to a hill of beans, that it would all go to a uh, foundation to perpetuate more cool shit. Um, and, you know, good, good life planet stuff. It's important to do. Um so and more cool shit isn't like an angel investing or venture capital fund uh, that's I, what I don't think it's cool shit constrained like. in, into a particular you know w what types of organizations it could support or what efforts it could do but it's it's more and i think we're, we're trying to figure out like what's the what are the guiding principles of that foundation yeah have you come um, up with any yet are they in line with the guiding principles of your life is it purely your organization or your family's then uh no it would be it would be at the at the ultimately it would be a nonprofit um that would be bequeathed all of my you know equity in Arkimoto and would use that as a battery of support for good things nice um but and its uh, goal is to depopulate the planet I'm kidding no <laughs> not even close to populate the planet I mean, what what would be the the guiding light of like what the money should go toward I, mean, changing? I, I, I guess uh, the uh Perhaps the term of sort of like right-sizing our relationship with the planet is maybe a term that would capture the effort there. I like it. An example of that's Arkimoto's micromobility. That's right-sizing mobility. Yeah. What else should we right-size? Have you thought it through? Like, do you have a lot of daydreams that you just don't have the day to? Because, I mean, being your neighbor, I'm like, oh, I guess I hate a mark. I'm like, he, you have someone over. You're on the phone, like, the majority of the day. You're a busy guy. Uh, well, <laughs> this is true. Yeah, you know? it's a, uh, yeah. Arkimoto occupies the the vast majority of my cycles. And yeah, it's it's a 
There's a lot of moving parts in a Ton. scaling, uh, you know, nascent global vehicle manufacturing yeah. empire. Second largest pure EV uh, in the U.S., right? I think Cur it was on the earnings. manufacturing electric vehicles here. Ex besides Is that true? Tesla. Is that still true? I mean, that was yesterday from the from the meeting. I heard that was wild. Wow. I've never had that as oh. a screensaver. Interesting. Pretend like it's you still know, recording. Well, we were definitely the uh, the the second pure EV play uh, to hit Nasdaq. As I recall, as I recall, which uh, is wild. Do, do you enjoy the aspects of being a public company or do you still wish it was private? It seems like you deal with a lot more red tape and hypotheticals of like you can't say forward thinking thoughts and like all these different forward thinking thoughts, forward thinking, forward -thinking thoughts. statements, like a lot of like yeah, in a lot gotta, of ways you have to really be cautious. You now. just have to be clear what is and is not a forward looking statement. I think one of the one of the things you get away with when you are a you know private startup company doing something is that you say the future as if it is the now yeah right like we've got the most amazing blah 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 and what you mean is we think we're eventually going to have the most amazing blah 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 but we don't have it right now but we we've got it in my mind yeah you know i, I can see it mm -hmm. uh and so being being a, a public company ceo you've got to be very clear about what you got and what you're aiming for and making sure that you separate those those two you, you don't want to even put uh them in the same sentence and it's it's not only when you're on the clock it's all the time with you which is an interesting thing like your whole like if if you're kind of at a bar and you're talking to someone who's a reporter like a tv show but like but like in reality like you have to in many ways live your job it's a full-time job. It's a full-time job yeah. for the past like 14 all, years. All-time job. Yeah. yeah and th things happen at all, all hours. And uh, you got to... The one thing I think I'm, I'm really very thankful for now is just that to have a resilient and super kick-ass team. Yeah. Um, where the, the team is actually shouldering a lot of that now. Like nice. when maybe I need to get involved, but I'm, I can be like, yo, Ray, uh, can I get a vehicle here at this time boom and it shows up it's like you know for the first 10 years i was you know i was driving the truck or fritz was driving the truck or jesse was driving the truck uh and you know unloading prototypes and loading them back up and doing doing all the bits and pieces yeah. and eventually you kind of go like okay um i'm ready to hang up the keys for Start that handing for that stuff piece off. of the role oh well, that's an interesting part when i look at arkimoto as a structure I see the two most interesting aspects of it compared to most other organizations is one, you don't fire people. And two, there's hypothetically unlimited paid leave as long as it doesn't disrupt or like say what? Is it true that you don't fire people? That that Arkimoto doesn't fire yeah. people? No, that's not true. Oh, man, that's something I've heard time and again. People are like, yeah, Arkimoto just doesn't fire people. I'm like, really? It's like they just move them, move them tasks. Uh, you, that's not true. Who's been no, saying that? No, we, we've definitely fired people. Uh, I, I wouldn't say lots of people, but we've, we've, we've there, when, when it's clear that there's not an organizational fit, we, mm -hmm. uh, encourage a transition nice. out of the venture. Yeah. It's an interesting um, place. However, when, the, when there is a, a, an organization and sort of mission fit, but the role is not right, mm -hmm. then we do try and accommodate trying to find the right spot for people. And a mission fit would be very honed into micro mobility. Like I, I applied for a position um, or not even really, I was just talking to one of my professors up at OSU because he's like, I could hypothetically bring you on to a five year master and then PhD program. He said, but the thing that you have to care about most in life about anything is ch ch kids recess because that's what I study. And if you have like a tangential kind of interest in that, you are not going to make it. You're going to hate it by the end of this. You're going to have to, you're going to lose your relationship right. with everything, you know? So it's like, it's really to a certain point when you have a large company or like a graduate school and all these things, like you have to be laser focused on what your mission is. Yeah. So what's, what's the mission statement that you expect employees to have coming in here? Well, Arkimoto? Arkimoto's mission statement is to, is to build products that catalyze the shift to a sustainable transportation system. That's been the, oh, yeah, you want one more, one more throw? Is that what we're looking for? All right. Oh, that, was, that one hit the chair. That's it's good. such that's a jumbo-sized ball. That's going to come back ball. fast. That's going to come back fast. It's such a jumbo-sized ball. It's, it's, okay, here, you got to bring it here, though. I'm not getting up. No, no. 
Bring it over here. No, bring it over here. Yeah, see, repetition works. Eventually. Repetition works eventually. Yeah. No, something more private is we're, we're, uh, we with the whole house, um, are doing an exercise thing and I randomly checked. I'm like, can I just change it? So my exercise is 15 minutes instead of 30. Oh, I don't even have my watch on. You don't even have your watch on. I, I didn't I'm, wear I'm mine. I'm not getting credit right now. You're not getting credit. I didn't it's wear mine garbage. all yesterday. Cause the first day. It's right in Tuesday off. Yeah. I was like, I want to check if I can do this. And then it kept the score doubled. So it, it in, in many ways, it counted those two days instead no, of one. Want, I you want the ball, you gotta, you gotta put it here. Gotta put it here. Yeah, you gotta put it right here. If you bark, I'm gonna put you inside. Is it accurate that you used to do yoga and meditate and read? You seem like a very multitask person at this point in your life. Yeah. No. I. I well, my 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 fit AF dot today program is on three pillars. Uh, a sit, uh, the standing sequence of Ashtanga, and at least a two mile run. Which you still do. I have been tracking the run, been getting a little off my game on the, uh, the old stretching and sitting thing. The stretching and the, the sitting are the easy weeks. part. The, the run's the hard part of that. The run's the easy one. The you easy get on lope. your shoes and just out the door? Easy lope. You just got to put the shoes on and just start, start moving. And, and if I have it right um, in my notes, you're a very large proponent of heel first barefoot running. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you quite got it. Let me try repeating it one more time. Um, no, it's a, it's, it's the, the midfoot strike. Okay. You're, okay. You're going inside. You're going inside. Inside. No barking. Inside. Barking dog. Inside. Yeah. Inside. All right. Now she won't trip on the wires. Nice. Well, she surprisingly didn't nimble for a dog. She's Not a dog very, to very agile dog. <laughs> Your, your your fears have been realized. She knows we're out here. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm like, never. I had one person show up. I didn't air the episode. She was in the middle of a, a manic bipolar episode. She's like, you should do a, half an episode with me now and half when I'm depressed. And she came over in a $70,000 truck that she couldn't afford with a puppy she had gotten the day before. And she's like, it's okay. The puppy can be in here. I'm like, it's going to shit or something. And it was just gnawing at the table. And I was like what's going on i'm like it was actually a genuine insight into like whoa yeah and i didn't air the episode because when she got depressed she was like i don't want it the truck got repoed and like all these kind of things so it was like that would have been a great episode if there had well, been the, the second 30 minutes at to least taste you're getting it. the story out yeah i mean who knows if and i'm not going to say her name it's interesting i had uh so you're i was going to have your show first and then all the shows and the person who i had on yesterday every time he would like say a story like that he would say the person's full name i'm like how would you do that publicly? It's such an interesting oh, thing. Yeah. Wait, so you, I thought I was going to be your first show back. With the dog barking and oh, <laughs> the throwing. Oh, man, what? It, it, are, oh. You, are you okay if it just comes out? It'll be a hidden episode. All right, all right, all right. Unlisted. <laughs> unlisted. Forever unlisted interview. But yeah. if you've got the link, but if you've got I the highly link, recommend it. It exists. It just will be it. out there. And we may be interrupted halfway in for a, for a late night walk or jaunt or bike ride or whatever you're going to yep. go on with a wonderful person who I've got to meet, which I would say the coolest thing that's happened by becoming your neighbor and just being involved in this ecosystem is you have found a crew of hundreds of the coolest people on the West coast. And some of them stop by here from Seattle to LA. Some of them live around here and I never would have met them. And it's like, Whoa, it's really fascinating to just meet a t like cool person after cool person to the point where I'm like, I have to slow down. Like once your, your social net grows too much, you start losing people. And it's just like, I, f I find that there's generally a very high density of cool people out there the world over. Absolutely. As long as you, I, yeah. Up until now, I've been finding my, using my phone as like a magnet detector or <laughs> to try to find like cool people. Like, like I found you through the phone, the, through the, Twitter. The, the dousing stick of cool. Yeah. And it works pretty well, but I've never just been like at events. Like typically like when you're up until 24, like college parties, everyone's like interest is in meeting another person or get like drinking and something like there's not this like this bigger aspect to them where like i have a mission statement but then once i, I started spending just like talking to people about interesting things yeah like so it's like a very cool aspect of like maybe talking to people who are like a couple years older than me as i'm like oh people start like developing as a character forever 29 dude i'm you're you're catching up forever 29 i have yeah. five more years that's i really think that was the branding fail on forever 21 I mean, forever come 29. on, if they'd just been forever 29, yeah. they, would, they wouldn't, just, they'd still be in business. They'd still they. be in business. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
it's a fascinating thing to jump back into this. I, I am way out of place. It's like a unique situation. It's someone who, honestly, I think the longest up until now that I've talked to you, like, in a row has been max 20 minutes. You're a very really? enigmatic figure in terms of, like, oh. you got all these things going on. I'm like... That's there are, Mark. There are priority interrupts that seem to arrive here. Understand? And there. You can't like like accept a call from someone from you know a different country. Like really important call. Hold on, I'm talking to a 24 year old who's fun to hang out with. Hey, dude, <laughs> send a voicemail. I right might there. miss a joke. I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna have to send you a voicemail. Be here. where you are. Yeah, it's a valid thing. I mean, if anything, a lot of people have tried to talk me out of videoing as often as I do. Like I just pull up my phone and record a little bit for this. This you are you are the. TikTok legend of Arkimoto. TikTok legend yeah. of Arkimoto. Right? Yeah. Um, nice. And it all started from, and it's not a fully developed theory that like people can Google yet, but someone pitched the idea to this like weird little niche group that they're like, man, you get this really emotional jump when you look at old photos or you read old letters and stuff. It's like, imagine how, like how much it's going to progress in terms of like, if you look at something you took two years ago on a vacation, you're like, oh, I love that. And it's like high def and you can really enjoy it compared to like, a photo from childhood you're like maybe i kind of remember so like the more of the memory that you can capture in the higher definition until eventually you can just re-simulate being there so i'm like the goal is to like record as much of your day as possible without interrupting <laughs> living in the moment just be able to go back to any moment in time and just perfectly it, relive it yeah interesting or or, or or capture enough data that you know the simulation can fill in the rest yeah eventually that kind of thing yeah. it's like okay we know what you looked like at that age and what you're roughly but, doing but then you're just like why not just experience the totality of whatever is happening in that moment which you know which does include the simulation replay of your prior moment yeah but it's um, very it's very fickle in terms of like memories i've started like blatantly telling people like when someone tells me a story and they're like you don't seem interested i'm like i don't believe I don't believe it. I don't believe like in the past or history or like like your individual past is entirely accurate because I could talk to a different person at oh, the same yeah, event well, look, and it'd be every, like that's not true. Is, I mean, there's I I you I love those, you know, books and movies or whatever that that tell us the same story from the perspective of a bunch of different characters. Absolutely. And they and the the great authors that can write vastly different personal experiences of the same set of events yeah from the perspectives of the various people and then you realize that's like all of life and every that's conversation with life. everyone and every crazy you know multiple person dynamic right so, is that people and the other thing is we use words to communicate right yeah i'm using the word i i'm using the word you know, like I, I'm using the word the, I'm using the word. That said, that's what but, I think it but is. So every, it makes sense. every one of those word patterns in our, in our brains has attached to it like lots of other stuff. Like certain words have emotional components, right? If, 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 a, if your parent used a particular word all the time um, when criticizing you, mm then it, when somebody else brings that word up in conversation, you will have the emotional response to that word that, has n that may have absolutely nothing to do with the intent of the person who spoke it in that moment. Yeah. Right? And, and so they're like, every word is a potential landmine in somebody else's mind. Absolutely. I right? ran into that really recently where I made a subtle joke and I was like, it called back to like two years ago. They had told me about like a childhood trauma that involved like that animal or like that like thing. And I was like, oh, wow. I'm like, how many times in conversation do I trigger people just based off of never hearing their entire history? Right. And I'm like, man, trying to make jokes in a social situation is really a gamble. That's why, that's why you know, pictures worth a thousand words and a meme gets a few more yeah no i like it but but still at some point i would much rather just just i, I really enjoy people who who make a lot of swings for jokes and if they miss ones like being in a group situation where they don't really care it's like jokes yeah. are almost a party enjoying just workshopping it man just workshopping, just workshopping it. It. enjoying reality has been something that i've really been like trying to push i'm like it seems like that it goes back to the whole like pure replicator thing is like a lot of people seem to not care the quality of existence that they're living in they seem to be like well, I've been programmed to survive, subsist, and reproduce at whatever cost available. I'm like, but hold up. At any point in this process, you could enjoy what you're doing. Well, you're, you're, that's sort of like a pure replicator pattern of living, you know, surviving through life. Is like you're repeating your own, you know, the pattern to go open the fridge and get the cereal and pour yeah. it in the bowl and all that. Um, 
Yeah, but that enjoyment piece, that creativity piece. Yeah, you just have to enjoy it. It's like this little thing that can fit in to almost anything you're doing to the point where like you can really think sometimes you're like sweaty, you're like drunk or like you smoke some weed or whatever and you're like fatigued, like trying to screw something in and you're like, I don't like, why am I so uncomfortable? And you're like, I I could just enjoy this just as easily. You just take a deep breath and like really getting caught up in the moment is kind of the basis of people like letting emotions, like I've been starting to think of people who get mad, like, like verbally mad. I'm like, they just, their, their emotions control them. Like they're not in control of their emotions. I'm like, often one deep breath really is kind of what makes that difference though. So yeah, I'm a big proponent of a hedonistic way of living. I mean, that's the hedonistic imperatives, the basis of humanity plus, which is extending lifespans in many of these things of, uh, their eventual goal to, to beat death or they're like, it's not, it's not this, this automatically programmed thing. It potentially is beatable. Um, it's just, it's just well. Like, can can you make an uh, an immoral monkey? Probably, in some yeah. in some way. But you can definitely but, make an immoral monkey. <laughs> you can definitely make an immoral one. But I think the question is always like, who's who's on the inside of that experience? Yeah. What's the what's the perception looking out there? Yeah, it's an interesting. Or is it just re-simulated? That's why, like, I've really kind of given into that. I'm like, for all we know, this is just a simulation. And if so. I'd like to be able to relive the best aspects of it. I mean, because I really, I don't know. But what if all of this is along the best aspect of it? I've also thought of that. And then you start telling people that and they're like, they like, tell you all the worst things on that go on 1.5x speed. Yeah. You know. And then the movie Click comes out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like you, whenever you pitch the idea, they're like, hey, everything's really wonderful in this like existence. Like people will bombard you with facts. And I've been, I do this as well and with people, but it's like, there has to be some level of like believing and seeing the bright side of life that allows you to be happy in the day to day, but also understanding like things like the oceans collapsing and like we need to right size humanity or else we're going in the yeah, wrong like, direction. Like, like right now. Yeah. Right like, now. Right now. Like, right now, be, happen, now is the best time to yeah, do it for sure. Which is wild because then if you spend your whole time like really focusing on the negative, like you almost become less productive. You get so defeated that you're like, it's why like do you, anything? You go the, the, the transition from like, oh, that's not a problem to oh, that's a problem and we can't solve it. Like, eh, there's yeah. a little space right in the gap where there's like, oh, that's a problem, and I'm just going to give it the old college try yeah. and do everything I can to try and solve that problem for at least, I don't know, 15 minutes. Yeah. And then be like, oh, it's too much work. And, Sorry. And I know I spent the last 40 years telling you that it's not a big deal and the science is still out or whatever, yeah. and now I'm just going to be all defeatist about it. It's like, oh, yeah, it's just... It's a little, it's the a thing elbow grease in there. You may have learned earlier than most people. Most people in their early twenties didn't just make a, a video game that got them a fair amount of money. And then, then the pressure of, Oh, if I'm going to live my morals, I now have to use this effectively to make the world better. Like most people, they're like being better is don't well, yell I at your kids. That. Or, that wasn't in the twenties. Don't yell I at was... your kids or partner, you know, like that's enough of making a positive impact on the world is being right. nice to the, those around you. But like, for someone well, like I think you, that's the that's that's the that's the most critical lesson. It's the most critical yeah, one. Be nice to sure. the other monkeys. But like someone like <laughs> you, like like, did it hit you at a certain point of like, oh, you can't just go enjoy the like, you can't just go enjoy the extravagantness of life. You also yes. have to like do something. There is there was a there was a very clear. I mean, it's been kind of a general thesis, but I. I what was the very clear moment? You almost said it. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I took a trip after after selling garage games, um, which was a pretty traumatic experience honestly uh because it was i I was not um i didn't have at that time the faculties either to uh properly really lead that organization and i really didn't have the facilities to properly deal with having a lot of cash interesting right most people wouldn't see that as a problem that you don't have the right faculties for well i i it's I, I was trading away something whose value I knew, which mm-hmm. was equity in uh, a, a bunch of IP and code and know-how and a great team and all of that for a pile of dollars. Yeah. And I didn't know what I would do with those dollars that would be equivalent to what I thought I was going to be able to do with that amazing team and ethos and so on yeah so it's a hard trade did you make an immediate choice or did you take a couple months off and like realize pu- this I'd, is the perfect thing to do on right size mobility no i well I, I did i took a break i right after the sale i jumped on a train did a cross-country train trip for the first time 
uh, certainly not the last, um, and uh, decided to try my hand at lobbying in Washington, D.C. Wow. For, um, at that time, it was for a, an end to the war in Iraq and uh, better trains. That was, those were the two things I was like, I'm going to try knocking on the door <laughs> of all the congressional delegation from Oregon and just see what happens. Yeah. You know? Um, when you set out on that, it was just to do the Iraq thing. And then by the time you get there on the train, no, you're no, like, let's no. also was, fix was, this I was, too. I was, I, was, I was well into trains at that point. Okay. Um, but uh, on that same trip, I went up to New York and went to Rockefeller Plaza for the first time. Kenzie and I are binging 30 Rock right now. And on the wall, there's a, on one of the walls in one of the rooms, there's a quote from John D. Rockefeller Jr. that says, unto, it's like, unto him who much has been given, much shall be required. Yeah, and that was it. Was that that was like that was one of those moments of like, okay, I gotta, I gotta go home and get to work. Yeah, it's a stressful thing. To understand? I mean, when I first reached out to you, is based on Twitter, and your uh, and you said it, your your caption or your uh, bio was taken from someone else or somewhere else, where it was an idealistic polymath or something along those lines. <laughs> Uh, possibly, uh, I think it was possibly an idealistic polymath with a savior complex. With a savior that complex. That was written by Pete Danko of the Portland Business Journal, I think. Was that Pete who wrote that? He wrote it about you? No, no, no. It was, uh, it was, it was, there, there was, I mean, it was a Willamette Week article. It, there was, there was one that was just kind of Probably like an this. analyst, your favorite. It was, a, it was just a really, uh, it was, it was, it was one of those things like, that's some, that's some, Nicely crafted words. Yeah. So I'll, well, I'll, I'll take it. I would say it wasn't Pete. It was who? who you do anyway. really? Who cares about the person? You really do exude a savior complex. Well, I, I think, care about. I mean, Pete's Pete's good. Yeah. Pete's a, but Pete's a, a digger. I would say a savior complex probably almost comes with more heartache than just living a life where you're like, oh, I'm just one monkey. What does my say have to do anything? But you literally live it. You don't have an AC in your house. Like, there's all the, I, these ways in which you you live the idealistic polymath with a savior complex life. Uh, well, ju- I, I think it's more just like I it, at some point I hit the point where I was like, look, just because everyone else is pissing in the pool doesn't mean I have to keep doing it. Yeah, you know, it's like you go, I, I ideally nobody's pissing in the pool, but I don't need to keep uh, adding to the problem. What's the next right sizing thing in terms of like pissing in the pool is one problem. Say another people are building bombs in the pool and other persons lobbying to make the pool more bleached or whatever. Um, what's the, it, it's something that you don't, and you figured out your problem. You're going to remove love the pee. You give away with metaphors. You're right. going to remove the pee from the pool. That's right sizing mobility. Is there I mean, another, the pee, pee, I mean, yeah, eventually well, it, all, it all gets filtered out. If yeah. you just, that's the thing about the planet is like life is amazingly resilient. Um, and if you don't just keep repeatedly punching it in the face, yeah. it actually moves into a state of, t- you know, mostly of, of like health and, and wellness. Yeah. I mean, the plants, they spring up from sunlight. I used to think that plants were made of dirt, you know? But they're made of ar- the air. But they're made of air and light. Did you watch a Richard Feynman YouTube video that told you that? Richard uh, Feynman has a one. If you look up Richard Feynman fire, uh, I just showed Kenzie like three really? days ago. Yes. Wow. He explains it in depth and he's obviously one of the better speakers in science who have ever lived. Um, but is there another right sizing humanity problem that you maybe don't have the time to tackle, but you wish someone who out there is listening or, or like something that hasn't been like, you must uh, be like, man, okay, I wish yeah, I could put r- all like, my resources like, toward uh, uh, Delivery of food in side of garbage containers. That shit's got to stop. Yeah. Right, like why, like reusable containers they get returned at the curb, and yeah, maybe there's a buck deposit on each thing, and if you're lazy, you can just like put it on the curb, and somebody's gonna take it for a buck, yeah, and bring it right back to where it is, and then it gets washed, and then off you go, yeah, like that to me is one of those things where let's let's stop making garbage. That would be even more country fair living. Country fair literally does that. Well, welcome. Oh, you just figured it out. Yeah. Right? I know. That's kind of funny. Wheels of revolution out front and then the hippies on the inside. Anyway. It's, that's it's, really uh, funny to think about. That would be cool. It would involve a lot of like all the restaurants and like a lot of uh, one city being in touch with each other to be like. Hey, exporting. We're exporting, uh, you know, Eugene hippie culture through a publicly traded uh, small cap company now into the global market. Yeah. We got we got a lot more good stuff coming, I'm just saying. Oh yeah. I mean you're you're fourteen years into this adventure, you're probably gonna be tied to it for potent probably the rest well, of your my, days. My I, I 
I don't see any, ever any re, you know there's no end like to it that's with, the whole thing with 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 garage games it was a private company and uh, we you know there were partners that needed to exit and had different risk thresholds um, in this case uh, our, we're we're public we're in the market yeah. any anyone can come in or out whenever they want um, and so the the question is just how do we keep accelerating towards the goal and at any given point you can reassess and be like like this is correcting humanity but when you're probably making video games you had to have looked at them and like the creator of angry birds i don't know if you remember that game it was um like you just tap it up and down he removed it from the app store because like he had so many letters of people's lives who were being ruined by Whoa. obsessively playing his video games so like at some extent doing things that maybe I, like, I haven't received any letters of anybody obsessively driving no but, but playing tribes i'm talking about oh. yeah back about well, when you're making actually video no games. no you know, funny story, like, uh, uh, sorry, you were saying not to name drop people, but <laughs> like a buddy of mine who is a, now just a, like a just world-class Hollywood script writer um, uh, of movies that you might know was like, Fun. he was just super cracked on tribes and ultimately had to quit video games to do what he wanted to do. Wow. But that's how I got to know him was he's like, at one point, he sent me a letter. Me and Tim Gift, who is the director of Tribes, uh, oh. sent us both letters saying, "I um, I want to, you know, make games with you guys and fund the games that you want to make and cool. and so on and so forth." So it was, yeah, those games they can they can definitely be crack like. They truly. Speaking can. of which, yeah. I'm gonna grab one more beer. Cool. Uh, and can I get you any? No, I appreciate it though. And a short hiatus from the episode, which I may edit out later. Maybe not. I really can't make up my mind. This is a, a very unique and interesting situation. Might go take his joint or his uh, can of gar. And again, I'm never going to do ads in the show, but I will use products that, that I enjoy. And this is one of those products. There will also be potentially a kombucha being drank on my show, a local one. And that's the interesting point. Like The show isn't constrained to being local. So I don't know to what extent uh, if right, there's you can come outside, but you can't bark. no barking allowed. No barking. All right. How about a real challenge uh, without name dropping? Tell me a really funny story about eating blueberries and having someone ask you for them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I mean, this is just this is classic me in, in terms of just obliviousness. Um, I'd gone on a camping trip and brought a giant jar of just fat delicious oregon blueberries nice. gallon gallon glass jar um, nice. that i had picked uh with a, a dear friend of mine and um you know first night was passing it around the campfire and all the kids were just you know mounting down the second night i i pulled it out and i just started mindlessly eating and uh i was just eating these delicious blueberries and i look up and there's one other dude at the campfire, just like staring at the blueberries. I'm <laughs> like, your bloobs. And, and I just like handed it across, and he took it and he looks in there. He's like, There are only three left. <laughs> and he hands me the jar back. And, you know, the correct answer would have been, Bro, three is all you need. Yeah. Um, but uh, instead, I just shamefully ate the last three blueberries and put it away and, and he was just some random nobody wasn't you he? never know who you're going to run into on a camping trip yeah and so. w did they like was that what, a fire-based burning camp or a, a camping trip or was that just a different one no it was well it was i think it was down in california somewhere royo seco or something like that oh cool nice hey, good blueberry story <laughs> that's delicious blueberries but yeah i mean do you, do you have any questions in terms of what questions you'd like to know from the universe that people listening can be like I have an answer for that. I mean, you wake up every day and you just put out fires or do you um, self-starter and say, I want to uh, solve this? You know, it's in terms of like the, it's, I guess I'm not right now chewing on any big questions so much. It's just kind of, nice. um, there, there's a lot of just mystery unfolding all the time and it's fun to, it's fun to, fun to dive in. Yeah. I'm one chapter away from finishing the Celestine prophecy oh boy which is the book that you said you've read and uh person to name drop michael oaks gave yeah to me. oh all right uh nice it, word <laughs> yes, it, was, it was really enjoyable because i'm president never... of monroe and associates 
gave you some book advice. That's nice. Good book advice. I'm not sure on the other one. How to Win Friends and Influence People has always been a book that whenever I encounter someone who's read it, I'm like, you seem like you're following rules on how to get me to like you, which I don't like. How do like. you still know? How do you know my name if I only said it one time? Yeah. And like, what? Yeah. And like, why you are you agree- it? That's weird. You're going out of your way to never disagree with me. Like all these <laughs> weird things. Where I'm like, I, yeah, I, I don't remember. I, I, I did. I read that book a long time ago. I don't remember uh, any of the specifics, but it's stuff like yeah, that. And funny. I, enough, I like my friends. So apparently it's worked out so far. Apparently it's worked out a little bit, but the, I would say the Celestine prophecy for the first fiction book that I've read in, Ooh, most okay. of my whole life except well, can you for just put it here? East of Eden. I actually really enjoy it. The dog life. Nimble for a dog in the dark. You were I'm saying like, Celestine Prophecy. Yeah, it's See, there's a, the trick with if you're gonna be uh, constantly interrupted all the time. Yeah, you just have to make sure you kind of park the thread. Yeah, and come back to it. Do you have to realize that part way into owning a dog? You're like, or caring for a dog. You're not her. You know, no, she care. she definitely owns herself. She owns um, herself. I've I've been blessed with the ability to or the uh, the uh, first the, animal you've cared for in your life. Though? Was, no, oh no. Oh okay. For some reason, I got that vibe. I'm like, Mark was probably. I just... I mean, as a, as an adult, yes. Yeah, I, I had dogs when I was growing up. Which is a, a thing I've never done. Kenzie's been slowly moving away from animals since we've met, but I've never had an animal, and I don't know. Yeah, if... I think I think the main hangout for people is like the picking up the poop thing. Yeah. Right, and then then when you realize like it's really just like a what is it? <laughs> it's a warm stress. Bump. It's, a, it's a warm stress. When you said it, you know, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> It's like a fresh stress ball. <laughs> it's a bright way of looking at everything. <laughs> just gotta, you know. Yeah, yeah it's, but you just gotta be be uh, upwind. For me, it'd be the the, the, yeah, the yeah, idea right of just here. being married to like. You right. lose a certain amount of your freedom when you have a, when you have an animal. No, put it here. No, put it here. Put it here. All right, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not doing it. No, you gotta put it right here. You gotta put it right here. Yeah, you gotta put it right here. Oh, now, now he threw off the deck. Off the deck. Oh, boy. Having a dog seems like something that would tie you to a place. I mean, you probably didn't have one in your early 20s cause, or 30s as soon as you made the exit because you're, like, here. moving around and doing stuff. Get but it's ball. like... Get it. Put it here. Put it here. Quit trying to make me get up. <laughs> there you go. With someone as regular, like, like of a life as you, like, you can... You kind of have to stay here all the time anyways for the most part. So, like, having a dog doesn't, like interrupt your flow but like when kenzie and i went to quiet for 10 days no, it's like I, what would when, we do when i got so i got i actually uh, i kira and i um became connected right pretty much like a, a few months before arkhamar went public oh wow and i remember jesse uh when he when i sent him a picture he's like what are you thinking like, yeah we're, you're getting a dog pro we're about to become a public company we're gonna be i was like well you know I'll, this will Keep me It'll grounded tie you down. and home responsibilities taken care of and all the rest. Absolutely. Were you a wild child when before you were tethered down to like a publicly traded company and stuff? I just imagine anyone. So you were like 32? No, I, I mean, I was, no, uh, 30, I think it was, I was like, whatever, 33? I can't imagine many 33-year-olds th- who would be getting a place where they have a large pile of cash who still have it by the time they're 40-some-odd. I believe we just ex- experienced your birthday oh, with a live band. Well, I, I definitely, I, I got rid of all that cash as fast as I could, as it <laughs> turns out. It's like, Burn yeah, I was, it was, it was a, it was a shit show. Yeah, but, that's, that's what I'd imagine. Like Joe, uh, Joe Morgan, who may come on the show eventually. When he, him and quite a few people, as soon as I pitched them, they're like, yeah, but what topics are we going to talk about? I'm like, there's no topics. A lot of people yeah, are like but, feeling comfortable. You, I mean, I think Joe was, Joe was definitely, I mean, witness to and a participant in all the early shenanigans. He was there day one. Nice. But uh, he pitched to me. Spiritual like, co-founder, Joe Morgan. For, for people listening before, because his episode may not come out for a month or whenever it comes. Um, oh, dude, you got to post this live. I mean, we, sh- we should be live. No, live Joe's a, whenever Joe comes on, because like, who's Joe that we're talking about? The first oh, question Joe he oh, asked yeah, me. We, oh, Joe's is, episode comes Yeah, on. is are yeah. you on Team Human? And then uh, recently he was like, like okay. kind of like asked the question of what would you do with millions of dollars? I'm like... Who would want that responsibility of like right? 
That's a big right? responsibility. It's a big responsibility. Like, a lot of people probably just see the upside. No, you're of it. like, yeah, I'm gonna go get you know a, a new belt buckle, any belt buckle I want. Yeah, I can get it. That's a, but, what but, you uh, want probably goes up. No, your- I, I the, the challenge I had is I I opened up my front door and I was like, I've got enough. I've got enough that I don't have to work at all for the rest, of, you know, the rest of my days if I live reasonably simply. But and now you work twenty four seven. But I don't have even a drop in the bucket necessary to address the challenges of what this day brings for the world I walk out into. Absolutely. And that, that was that was kind of like the early despair was like just going. I've got w- way more than enough for me, and not enough to do anything real yeah unless i pretend that uh i may you know because normally like you get your cash out of a company mm-hmm. you're like okay well i'm gonna park 90 percent of it in you know chips. bitcoin or something but 10 <laughs> percent, i'm gonna really risk on something cool yeah um in this case i was like well i could either take that approach or i could pretend like i actually netted 10 times what I did and then just risk everything nice. on things that actually, you know, matter to me. Yeah. I did, did like carve, I, I, I started a foundation fund uh, with the Oregon community foundation at that point, uh, <laughs> uh, like 500 K. Cause I was like, you know what? Even if I blow all of this and I probably will, I still want to be able to give away, you know, still be able to give like a rich person. Yeah. But uh, you know, it kind of grandfathered it in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Is that what inspired you to start your, uh, just so you know, we are like a couple minutes from the end, your foundation. And like, I'm so curious because I keep hearing like the foundation. It's like, oh, we help. But it's like, have you ever like really like nailed down what it's going to do or like what no, it looks well, like? Well, again, like the, 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 it was only the, the, the intent was always for it to go to a foundation, but it had to be worth something to put in the effort to actually make the foundation in the first place. Yeah. Um, but like you say, now, now it's worth something. So uh, now, now I think the questions that you're asking in terms of like, what's, can we write down a mission statement? Um, They're big questions. Uh, uh, getting a getting a, a a board of directors in place of like first directors who uh, I really trust and who I think you know, just to help to yeah. help clarify a lot of that stuff. Um, those those are uh, those are the sorts of things. That, that are starting to take up some more cycles. Yeah, and you, you don't you feel like a nonprofit would be a better way of doing that than like a VC or angel? Like, well, well, so if they're, they're, it, it'll, it'll be it'll be multiple. I, I think the, the way that it is planned to be structured at the moment is there is a nonprofit foundation, and then there is an LLC that is that just gets the shares. So mm. it's still me, still yeah. a single member LLC, but that that LLC is a pledged gift. Uh, to the foundation upon my death. Yeah. Um, and then, but in the interim, while I'm still kicking around, like the, that LLC would shed cash into the nonprofit to do mm-hmm. those nonprofit things, but that LLC could also then support other types of uh, endeavors. Yeah, and it may just, what I'm trying to boil it down to, and I may be mis... Uh, so it's like legal structure versus intent. Totally, but I'm asking like in the way in which you're funding the world, like like a free market way of like funding things in a venture capital way in which they eventually are self-sufficient, or like black hole money ways of like 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 uh, things that you put money into that never generate any income. And sometimes that's worth it, like buying a nature reserve, but then there's some businesses that never make money. It's like, if it got completely cut off, would they have to find a way to innovate to make money? I was thinking, I'm like, the well, coolest part of, oh. of having power would be if you ruled all of Oregon, you could say, no more plastic containers. So all Tic Tac containers, everything would go away. All companies would be hurt. They would have to find a way to innovate around it and stay alive as a company. Like, there's some aspect of having to be surviving, you know. Government has a place in terms of the, you know, determining the rules of engagement for all of us in the sphere of commerce and interpersonal behavior and yeah. our uh, impact on the world, right? So it's you know setting the rules of the game, setting the economic rules of the game. That's there is is certainly a place for that, but the it you know the 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 company approach mm-hmm. the w- i guess what i what i what i realized in um in doing garage games and and afterwards and certainly looking at you know, companies like tesla and uh that that a corporation 
if done right, is a vehicle for change. Yeah. A certain kind of change. And there, there are some things that, that are worthwhile changes in the world that can only be accomplished by... <laughs> get it. Get it. That can only be, be accomplished. A profit-making enterprise that yeah. then, you know, not just perpetuates itself, but grows its mission into the world. And then perpetuates other further ones, much like what you're doing. It, it's like you there's know, some aspect to but that. To, but to your, to your earlier point, uh, there are definitely things that are good ideas that don't have a good business model yeah. yet. Like buying up wilderness right? Like, land, oh, Google reserve. search. Like, we don't know how we're going to monetize this thing. We're going to make a kick-ass search algorithm, but yeah. uh, we'll figure out the money thing later. Like, right now, we're just going to do something good. Uh, we're going to get lots of people using it. And they're like, oh, well, if you just let people advertise on search terms, turns out, you know, mint. And now you can fund yeah. a gazillion other things. So I, I do definitely uh, appre uh, appreciate the idea of things that are worth doing that don't, where you don't have to be like, oh, God, I got to figure out how to make money off of this thing before I do it. Cool. Right? Like you just, you do the cool thing and then you're like, well, Oh, hey, turns out I've figured out two years later that there's a good business model. Or not. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. We hit an hour. Thank you. The Boom. Kira's loud bark was the very end Dude, of the she hour. She was the, the, the bell. Ding, ding. And Party's over, kids.